Welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 12th day of April, and it is Tuesday, and today's topic is titled, Newton's Fireplace. So, um, it should be an interesting uh, topic here, um, and before we get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and He too can be your Lord and Savior today, if He's not already. And if he is, and you're discouraged or need some encouraging, hope and pray that this broadcast will be that to you. Amen. That's why I do these devotionals, so we can learn more of God's Word and get a quick little uh, uh, pick-me-up. Amen. So praise the Lord. All right, we're going to start with today's uh, scripture song. And so press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Second Timothy four eighteen. And, and the Lord, the Lord shall, shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever. shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever, amen, to whom be glory forever and ever, amen. Glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. So, we'll put that back to yesterday's and do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. Amen. Now it's time to get into today's topic for April 12th, titled Newton's Fireplace. And the passage is from Deuteronomy 1515a, it says, And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Deuteronomy 1515a. And he's talking to the nation of Israel here, but uh, we can uh, take this and uh, apply it in certain ways. Amen. Because uh, the Lord has redeemed you and I, if you're saved, that is. And praise the Lord for uh, his redeeming blood and praise the Lord for his grace and mercy and uh, that he would come down here and die for our sins and be buried and rise again the third day so we can have eternal life hallelujah all right so let me read this here uh, the author today is brother Tim Green from Revival in Our Times Day Heights Ohio so let me read you what he wrote here on this topic of Newton's fireplace all right he writes here John Newton made eternally famous by um, let me read that again. John Newton made eternally famous by his song Amazing Grace, which we learned uh, about a couple days ago about him. Uh, let's see, when was that? That was uh, on the 7th, last Thursday, uh, titled Amazing Grace, talking about him. So, praise the Lord. So, if you want to go back and check that out, that was on the 7th uh, of this month. All right, so, continuing on, it says... Um, that he was eternally famous by his song Amazing Grace, had this Bible verse paint, uh, painted on the wall above the fireplace in his study. So he had that Bible verse painted uh, on the wall above the fireplace in his study. This verse, I guess, up above Deuteronomy 1515a. And uh, it says he, he, who had actually been a slave to a demented couple in Africa, and had transplanted uh, shiploads of slaves across the foaming Atlantic Ocean, never wanted to forget that he had been a bondman to sin and had been wondrously transformed by the glory, or excuse me, by the grace of God. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. And then he writes here, he says, I think it is a dangerous idea to entertain that you have been saved a long time and really 
deserved God's grace, thus forgetting the rock from which you were in, and the pit from which you were rescued. See Isaiah 51, 1. Let's go to Isaiah 51, 1 and read that. Isaiah 51 and verse 1. Alright, so 51, 1 says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Hmm. So that was that verse, um, Isaiah 51. So again, he says, uh, I think it's dangerous, uh, it's a dangerous idea to entertain that you have been saved a long time and re uh, really deserve God's grace, thus forgetting the rock from which you were in and the pit from which you were saved. And then we just read Isaiah 51.1. It is the height of ingratitude and will provoke nothing but arrogance when humil humility should be the character of every redeemed child of God. Hmm. Yeah, let's take heed of that. Humility, humble, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. The Apostle Paul's attitude about this is readily observed in 1 Timothy 1.15. It says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. No boasting, bragging, or bravado there. Just, I know who I, whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, Second Timothy one twelve b And they made a hymn about that verse. Amen. i uh, probably have to sing that one here soon. All right, he writes here to conclude. He says, I believe we ought to take a page from Newton's study and the book of God, see Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 9. So let's go there to Deuteronomy 3. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 3. All right, Deuteronomy 3. And what did he say? He said verses 3 to, uh, or actually it was, uh, sorry, it was Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 9. Sorry about that. Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 9 says, uh, Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it that it may be well with uh, with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and there, excuse me, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto the, thy, thy children, and shalt talk of them whom thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, excuse me, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, Excuse me, all right, and uh, verse 9 says, And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. Hmm. So, of course, we know this is talking to the nation of Israel, but you can uh, take that. And uh, there is stuff in the New Testament about how we're supposed to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind. Amen. As born-again believers. All right, so again, he says, um, I believe we ought to take a page from Newton's study and the book of God. And we just read Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 9, and write or hang plaques or stencil some Bible verses around our homes to let others know whose house this is, God's. Hmm. And uh, so you can do that, but make sure that you write it in the tables of your heart too, amen, not just around your house because you can put scripture and stuff around your house and and uh, show that, uh, that uh, you... Uh, are supposedly following the Lord, but then you're not really following the Lord, so i um, not saying it's wrong to do that, but uh, let's make sure that we have it written in our hearts, amen, and in our soul, and that we're 
practicing it and living it every day, amen, not just having it written on the wall, so you can, I mean, it's good to be reminded of, uh, of scripture and stuff like that, and picking up the word of God and reading it and studying it, amen, and letting it sink into your heart so you can be a better Christian, amen, and we can all, uh, take a lesson from that, amen, so, and, uh, know that I'm not always, uh, perfect in that aspect, but praise the Lord that, uh, he can help you and me through it. Amen. And if, if we cer certainly desire it. Alright, so that is the end of the Baptist bread. Praise the Lord. And so let's take heed to that and let God's word sink into our heart and apply it to our lives and learn it and live by it. And um, Amen. Alright, so that is the end of the Baptist bread. And now it's time to get into the um, Boots on the Ground devotional for today for April 12th. And it's titled, Life is Like a Swift Sparrow. And this event takes place on April 12th, 627, way back in the year 627. And the passage is from Romans 10, 14. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And that's talking about us going out there and telling people about Jesus Christ and how he can save their soul. Amen. All right, now it's Romans 10, 10, 14. Okay, so let's get into this topic here. The 7th century kingdom of Northumbria, located in present-day northern England and southeastern Scotland, was ruled by the pagan Anglo-Saxons, descendants of the Germanic tribes that drove out the Romans nearly 200 years prior on 12 April 627 Paulinus the first bishop of York presented the gospel to the Anglo-Saxon king Edwin at one of the king's advice advisory meetings after hearing Paulinus one of Edwin's chief advisors responded to his king with this observation he says your majesty when we compare the present life of man on earth with that time of which we have no knowledge, it seems to me like the swift flight of a single sparrow through the banqueting hall where you are sitting at dinner on a winter's day with your counselors. In the midst there is a comforting fire to warm the hall outside the storms of winter rage. This sparrow flies swiftly in through one door of the hall and out through the other. While he is inside, he is safe from the winter storms, but after a moment of comfort, he vanishes from sight into the wintry world from which he came. Even so, man appears on earth for a little while, but of what went before this life, or of what follows, we know not. Therefore, if this new teaching has brought any more certain knowledge, it seems only right that we should follow it. <laughs> and that was from uh, his one of his chief advisors after uh, um, he was given the gospel here, this uh, Anglo-Saxon king, Edwin, by Paul Paulinus, and then his, uh, chief, one of his chief advisors responded to him uh, by saying that to him. All right, now continuing on, it says, After considering the words of Paulinus, and his own advisor, Edwin, promptly converted to Christianity, thus becoming the first Christian Anglo-Saxon king in England. Hmm, interesting. Well, praise the Lord. Hopefully he really was saved and trusted Jesus. So, uh, I admire the courage of Paulinus, who was bold enough to tell his king the truth of the gospel. Oh, let's take heed of that. Go out and make sure we're telling, uh, People about Jesus, especially co-workers and family and friends that are lost. Uh, if this man is uh, bold enough to go tell his king about Jesus, then we should uh, be bold enough to go out and uh, not be afraid to tell our co-workers and tell them, you know, their hope of uh, salvation in Jesus Christ and how they can have that hope. Amen. So what are we afraid of? If this guy can go tell a king, then we can certainly go tell a co-worker. Who? Ouch. Yikes. All right. Um, continuing on, uh, he says, I admire the courage of Paulinus, who was bold enough to tell the, his king the truth of the gospel. May we have the same boldness to witness 
for our King and declare the truth of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins to those who are lost. Hmm. So, good advice there. Amen. All right. So, let's take heed to that and continue to go out there and tell somebody about Jesus today. Amen. All right. And so, that will lead us into today's hymn. And this one is titled Victory in Jesus, a good hymn here. And this is the Testimony of Salvation, a spiritual song. And this is on page 418 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And so you can have victory in Jesus too. If you're not saved, you can be saved and have victory in Him. Amen. And even after being saved, have victory every day. And you don't have to keep falling into that temptation and keep living uh, that life after being saved, you can have that victory and uh, conquer the flesh by allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you and, and help you through it, amen, as you desire to do so. All right, so here we go. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary, to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Victory! Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me, and he bought me, with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Victory, victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the street of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Victory, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. Praise the Lord for having that victory in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so... Uh, let me read the little story down here. It says, From his early year, earliest years, Eugene had a great love for music and a substantial voice. After finishing his education, Bar Barlett began to travel, teaching and singing as he went. In 1939, however, in the prime of his labors, a stroke left him paralyzed in part. The last two years of his life, he devoted to a close walk with the Master, spending much time in the Scriptures and in recognizing the blessings, uh, 
uh, he yet possessed, the capstone of his 800 hymns, uh, was the most excruciatingly produced due to the physical limitations of his illness as clouds unveil the royal hues of the sky, so each note and phrase slowly came forth, etching upon uh, him modity the beloved lines. Amen. And so, praise the Lord. All right, let's see here. And that is the story. And let me give you the scripture uh, references here for each stanza. So the first stanza is John 6, 38, and then Luke 23, 33, and then Romans 5, 10 through 11, and 1 John 5, 4. The second stanza has Matthew 14, 14, Matthew 15, 30, Luke 4, 18, and 1 Corinthians 15, 57. And then the third stanza has John 14, 2 through 3, uh, Revelation uh, 21, 21. And Revelation 19, 1, and then 1 Corinthians 15, 54. And then the uh, refrain has 1 Corinthians 6, 20, and Revelation 1, 5 through 6 for the refrain. Amen. All right, so that's victory in Jesus. And uh, I may have sung that not too long ago, but amen. Praise the Lord. Good hymn. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so that is that for today. Amen. And now let's go ahead and sing some uh, scripture songs here before we wrap it up. And then we'll conclude it for today after that. So we'll do yesterday's, and then we'll conclude with today's. Mark eight thirty six and 37. For, for what, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain, gain the whole world, world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give? In exchange for his soul, for his soul, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul for his soul amen make sure we take heed of that second timothy four eighteen. and, and the, the lord, lord shall, shall deliver, deliver me from, from every evil work and will, and will preserve me, me unto his, his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. To whom be glory forever and ever. Glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, I like that last. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
All right, so that is the end of today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and boots on the ground devotionals. So tomorrow is the 13th, and we'll sing Jeremiah 7, 3. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's... Uh, Baptist Bread will be titled uh, The Broken Box. So, hope you'll uh, come back for that tomorrow. And um, again, about John Newton, he's the one that wrote Amazing Grace and uh, did a, uh, another uh, thing on him back on the 7th. So, you can go check that out on uh, from the 7th, which was last Thursday. And uh, good story there. Uh, John Newton, he wrote Amazing Grace and some other hymns. And then um, today, talking about him again, some more. Amen. So, all right. So make sure we uh, get to have scripture around the house and to be reminded of God's word and um, also to have it written in your heart. Amen. So praise the Lord and uh, hallelujah. All right. So that's that. And then the Boots on the Ground devotional title for tomorrow is titled Stones from the Sky. And this takes place on April 13th, 1360. And the passage is from John 10, 11. Amen. And then uh, I think tomorrow I'll do the the uh, hymn um, from this uh, verse here that was mentioned um, from 2 Timothy 1, 12b. I think that's uh, that was the, the verse there. Let me see. Or maybe it was... Uh, Yeah, I think that was the verse, so there was a hymn on that verse or some verse similar to that. I know who I'm a, how who I'm I have believed. Amen. So that I think will be the tomorrow's uh, hymn that I sing. Amen. Alright, so if you want to get a copy of the Scripture Songs book and CDs, they're available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And that's how you can get that. And they are missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. And then the Bat Spread devotional book is available for a subscription. You can get a subscription going for twelve ninety five every other month. And uh, if you get that now, this will be the one you get. Let me grab it here. And this is the copy of uh, next month and June. So it's got uh, it's got somebody watering some plants here. And so we'll get into that uh, cover in a few weeks. Amen. They sent it to me a little earlier than normal, so that's the cover for that, amen, and that's available online at www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org, I believe that uh, website's still up, and he's got other books available on that website, and then the Boots on the Ground book here, this is uh, available on the internet, you can order that off the internet, or maybe your local bookstore might have a copy of it, and then finally we got the um, big thick uh, hymn book here titled Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs Book, and it's on MelodyPublications.com, and uh, they are making a large print edition, so if you uh, want a large print edition, they should have that here soon, so amen, praise the Lord for that. All right, well, that'll be it for today's broadcast, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time, and let's treat each other well, and um, I know I'm uh, not always uh, good at that, but um, praise the Lord that... Uh, we are to love one another as Christians and believers in Christ and brothers and sisters because we have one another. And uh, um, so, amen. All right, so let's uh, learn from that and uh, praise the Lord. All right, so see you all next time. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.